Today we are going to make chicken fried steak. Quick, simple, delicious. Look at that amazing golden exterior, yet it's going to be so tender on the inside. It's Annie, of course, from Annie's Smoking Pot. Today we're making chicken fried steak. Quick, simple, easy. You can use cube steak if you want to make it even easier. Cube steak's already pounded flat, good to go. All you have to do is bread it. I'm not a fan of cube steak, so I am using a top sirloin steak. What you need to do though with the top sirloin steak is we're gonna butterfly that open, we're gonna pound it out flat, season it up, and it's so quick and easy. I don't think you understand how quick and easy this meal is. We're gonna air fry it. It's gonna take about eight minutes. That's it. We're gonna serve it with mashed potatoes and gravy. If you wanna make it into a breakfast deal, you can serve it with hash browns, scrambled eggs, and use a country gravy. I'm gonna use beef gravy today because it's lunchtime, not breakfast. Let's get started. First thing we wanna do is man our gloves. Why? Because we're touching raw meat. I'm gonna woman my gloves, not man my gloves. Because I'm gonna be pounding out the steak, I'm gonna wrap it in saran wrap just to keep it cleaner in my house. Butterfly, this bad boy open. Oh, look at that, it is so juicy already. The reason you wanna butterfly it open is because that way you can get it much flatter when you start pounding on it. Because that's what chicken fried steak is. For some reason, chicken fried steak is just a flat pounded steak. Oh my gosh. Sam, the cooking guy, seriously, dude, need a knife. This one just will not keep an edge anymore, so I think I might have to step up my knife game. I was hoping this one would keep me going for a little bit longer, but it doesn't seem to want to. There we go. I think that's good enough. And we're gonna start pounding. And again, you wanna use saran wrap. You can use a baggie. If you've got like a big gallon size bag, you can use that. You don't have to. You can just start whacking away at it on your cutting board, but then you tend to shoot juice everywhere. And with juice comes E. coli, Ebola, something. Something you don't want. So you know what? Saran wrap works great. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the flat side of my meat beater. Meat mallet. Ooh, look at that. We almost had a tragedy. I'm gonna just flip this around so that it's a little bit in the bag, a little bit more, or in my plastic wrap. And let's beat some more. Once I get it to about this thick, let me show you. I'm gonna turn my meat beater over and I'm gonna use the pokey side, the pokey side. That's gonna help tenderize. That's about how thick you want it. That would be what, quarter of an inch, half inch, quarter inch, you know. I'm gonna cover it up again, only because I don't want splitty splatties. Pokey side. And you don't wanna go too hard with the pokey side because I don't want to go through the meat. I just want to tenderize the top of it, flip it over, same thing on the bottom. If you go all, I know you probably can't hear me. If you go all the way through, you run the risk of like breaking the meat, like putting holes in the meat. So then when you start cooking it, all those juices inside are just gonna go everywhere and you're gonna have a very dry piece of steak. So just gently with the pokey side. That's it. Quick, simple, easy. And you know what? If you've got a child that loves to cook in your house, let them do this part because what child doesn't have some pent up rage that they just wanna whack at stuff? Right? Right. You know, it happens. I understand. Let's get our dredging station set up. Garlic powder. Onion powder. <laughs> I don't know why I smelled that one. And parsley. And yes, I use dried parsley and dried tarragon because if you use the fresh stuff, it, it just isn't going to work. It's not going to adhere very well. It's going to sog up and all. It's just not going to be pretty. And one of my favorites smoky paprika. Now, if you are making this for breakfast, you can change up your spices to whatever you like. With a country gravy, I don't think I would do the smoky paprika 
but I and I don't know well, I might still do the tarragon and the parsley but I think I would also add sage as well more of a breakfast type taste and we're just going to mix this up really well so that we don't have any clumps of spices in one area because you want to have it evenly coated on your steak okay now I am using two eggs because that steak's pretty big if you need to add more egg, add more egg. If you need less egg, use less egg. Let's go ahead and just crack that in there. You don't want any shells, of course, unless you want texture in your chicken fried steak and have at it, you know? Maybe shells are good for the digestive tract. And you just wanna beat that up. Okay, let's get dredging. First thing you wanna do is I like a good, I like seasons on my steak, I just do. So, gotta lose my gloves because I'm touching stuff. So I have got just some fresh cracked black pepper. We're just gonna pepper that. We're gonna do both sides, but I also have some Himalayan pink salt that we're going to do. The salt will help keep the steak tender as well. Salt is like a natural tenderizer. I am also going to get my air fryer going now because you want to heat it up. We're going to go 400. We're going to go about eight minutes, but we're going to flip it after four. So 400, eight minutes. And as always, it's a rough guesstimate as far as that goes. The actual time it takes is going to appear boop, right there. Do you see it? That's how long you're actually going to cook it for. Now, everybody's air fryer is different. Even if you have the same air fryer, you know what? Unless they were made 100% identical, it might run a little hotter, might run a little colder. The times and temps that I give you are based on what I use. So just play with yours. You can also put this in the oven if you wanna do that, 400 degrees for probably in an oven, I would say probably closer to about 20 minutes. You can also pan fry it, do a nice shallow fry in some oil. And you just wanna do that to where it's golden brown, flip it, golden brown, you're done. It's steak. You can eat steak rare. So it's not like it is, it's called chicken fried steak, but it's not chicken. It doesn't have to be cooked through. Cook it to your preference. Into the flour, we go. And yes, I am now touching raw meat. But as you can tell, I try to touch it with just little fingers. And you wanna make sure and get flour on all the parts because that's what's gonna help the egg stick. Then into the egg, yes, this is going to make a mess, as you can see. So we're just gonna dredge that right through the egg, pick it up, dredge that side right through the egg. And you wanna try to keep a wet hand and a dry hand. Might not always work based on the size of your pan or your plate that you are desperately trying to use. Oh, that looks great. Let's get a little bit more on there. Again, you wanna make sure that egg is on every part of it because that is what's going to help our flour stick the second time around. And then back into the flour. You wanna coat it really, really well at this point. This is what's going to give it that golden texture, that crunch that you want on chicken fried steak. Oh, that looks like a great dredging job. As you can tell, I am not professionally trained. I'm sure there is a much neater, cleaner, easier way to do this, but eh, you know what? It works. I have limited space. I'm in a tiny home. I work with what I have. Our air fryer is ready. Oh my goodness. Let's go ahead and add that in there. I'm going to go ahead and spray the inside of my air fryer, just a little spritzies and put this down in there. And then I'm gonna spray this as well with my avocado oil because that is what helps it also brown. Yeah, I don't like this sprayer at all. Huh. Trying something new might be a fail, but I'm, I'm hopeful. Get that started in four minutes. I'm gonna flip it over, spray the other side and let it go for another four minutes. Our air fryer has beeped and it did. It took eight minutes, four minutes per side in my air fryer. We're gonna go ahead and show you that end result. Oh my, oh, can you hear the sizzle? Juicy. Let's go ahead and take that out of there and see how it looks. 
Doesn't that just look delicious? Oh, should we see how it looks on the inside? Let's see how it looks. I'm whispering. You can't hear me when I say stuff like that, right? What I said was, let's see how it looks. Beautiful. We're about a medium, medium well on this end. This end over here is probably going to be a little bit more. Let's just slice right through the middle and see what we're looking at. Oh my gosh. So amazing. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That is cooked so perfect. You see all that juice running out? I don't want to slice it anymore because technically you should have let this rest. You let it rest about three, four minutes before you cut into it so that it gives it a chance for those juices to suck back up into the meat. But you know what? I was so excited to try it. I can't wait. I'm going to give it a try. Oh, it's hot though. Mmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That just melts in your mouth. Oh my goodness. Cameraman Darren. Oh, the spices are a perfect combination. Absolutely perfect. You get that tarragon. Mm. That, that is so tender. Oh my God. <laughs> that tarragon is just the forefront of that seasoning is that tarragon. Then you get that smoky paprika, of course. The salt and the pepper are there as a little back note, as is the garlic and the onion. But that tarragon is just in your face delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and plate this up. I am serving mine with mashed potatoes and gravy. Cause who doesn't like mashed potatoes? Oh, the kicker for really good mashed potatoes is sour cream instead of milk and melt your butter in the microwave beforehand. Instead of just putting butter cubes in your mashed potatoes, I melted mine up with a little garlic salt, or no, garlic powder. Mix that into the mashed potatoes. Can't go wrong. Light, fluffy mashed taters. I am serving mine up with a brown gravy. Like I said, if you wanna turn this into breakfast, a country gravy would be amazing over this with some mashed potato, or uh, some hash browns, little scrambled eggs, just rich, thick goodness. Because you know what? It's December, and while we were filming, it started to snow. Look! Comfort food. Comfort food is where it's at. In the month of December, January, it's all about comfort food. I hope you caught the video before this one where I made a chicken pot pie in the air fryer. That right there is comfort all around. And it was a smash hit. Try it watch some of my other videos. You will not be disappointed. And if you are, let me know why. Let me know what I can do better to make it more enjoyable for you, my YouTube family, my subscribers, my friends. So there we have it. Chicken fried steak in an air fryer. Eight minutes. Simple ingredients. Can't go wrong. I hope you enjoy. Bye!